Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. We're in the sports section. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, my prayers are with Michael Kantz, who is undergoing multiple surgeries right now. He's Manny Pacquiao's advisor. He has been one of the driving forces behind some of the biggest fights we've seen recently. And he is facing a challenge, a health challenge, and uh, let's all root for him. Okay, let's talk boxing. Carl Froch, he's pity pattering around, not in a rush to fight James DeGale. In fact, he wants the way to avoid James DeGale, and he's out of excuses, right? Because the two guys have the same promoter. This should be as simple as saying, hey, okay, when are we going to have this fight? But of course, Carl Froch doesn't want the fight because, let's be blunt here, he loses that fight. He gets undressed. Understand, James DeGale, who can fight out of a southpaw stance, isn't remotely concerned about Carl Froch's left jab. Also, DeGale doesn't have to move to beat Carl Froch. He can deconstruct Carl Froch from the inside out. This is different than the George Groves fight, right? So, I believe Carl Froch understands that the Gale would be his biggest challenge in a long time, right? I also believe, too, that Carl Froch understands that it's one thing to lose to a fighter in the United States, let's say Andre Ward. I believe Carl Froch views himself as the best in the United Kingdom, right? Losing to a UK fighter, especially one from a different generation, whether it's George Groves or James DeGale, would simply be devastating in Frotch's eyes to his legacy. Keep in mind, this is a guy who was trying to hunt down and was calling out Joe Calzaghe when Calzaghe was at the tail end of his career. Right? Carl Frotch wants to be the king of England. James DeGale stands in the way. I believe personally that Carl Froch would rather give up his title by fighting, let's say, somebody else, right? Mikael Kessler again. There are a few big-time fights for Carl Froch. Let's remember, too, that Carl Froch actually is the man who gave Jean Pascal his first loss, right? Froch might go in that direction. There's always the unfinished business with Andre Durrell. Let me point out too, with regard to Andre Durrell, just as an aside, I've watched Durrell his entire career. The Andre Durrell that exists today, if you look at his last fight, I don't believe Durrell has ever been better. Now, I thought Durrell beat Frotch the first time. I believe Durrell would certainly beat Frotch the second time. In any event, I believe Carl Frotch would rather fight guys from other countries than fight James DeGale. And he has good reason, as I've said, because, of course, as I've been saying here online now for a long time, DeGale would undress him. I personally would expect DeGale to win that fight going away. Let's talk about Canelo. Right, I don't want to pull words here. The Joshua Clotty who beat Anthony Mundine. And that fight surprised me. Right? I thought Mundine would beat Clotty. But that Joshua Clotty would give Canelo all he can handle. Understand the uh, problem Clotty had before was he would be in a shell. Right? And he wouldn't have an active defense. He wouldn't move around the ring a lot. Well, when you look at that Mundine fight, you're going to see him not only moving around the ring, you're going to see him leaping in with power shots. 
That's a fight where he drops Mundine several times in the fight. It's a tribute to Mundine that Mundine has the stones to get off the canvas, even in a fight in which he's being battered. Right? With the desire to go the distance. Right? Mundine is a lot like Joe Fraser. Right? You know, he's all in. But Clotty batters him. Let me point out, Clotty is a better defensive fighter than Saul Alvarez. Right? And I don't believe Clotty would be as in front of Saul Alvarez as he was, let's say, Manny Pacquiao. Also, push back the clock a little bit. If you want to see a classic fight between Clotty and an elite fighter, take a look at the Clotty Miguel Cotto fight. Right? There are many who believe Cotto didn't win that fight. Right? Joshua Clotty, quite frankly, is winning that fight with two rounds to go. It's up to the viewer whether Cotto does enough in the last two rounds to pull that fight out. Right? The point is that Joshua Clotty is dangerous. Think about it. Goes the distance with Manny Pacquiao. Goes the distance with Miguel Cotto. Beats Zab Judah. Goes to Australia. Knocks down Anthony Mundine several times. Right? I had no idea why Las Vegas casinos were laissez-faire about his fight against Saul Alvarez. I was just waiting for that fight to be announced. Then I was going to say, hey, Take Clotty, the underdog. Well, it looks like Saul Alvarez hurt his ankle. Right now, I'm not here to question the injury, but let's just say this hurt ankle might enable him to avoid Joshua Clotty altogether. Right? He's leapfrogging Clotty to get to Miguel Cotto, according to rumors. Let me just point out that I like Miguel Cotto in that fight. Right? First... Let's just talk psychologically about the fight. Miguel Cotto has an older brother, right, who's a good fighter, but who isn't Miguel Cotto, right? That older brother fought Canelo, and I'm here to tell you, if you look at the first two rounds of that fight, the guy almost decks Canelo, right? Canelo gets caught. Canelo's in trouble. The story at the time was that Canelo was having weight problems and stuff like that. Well, what I want you to do is you look at that film. I believe his brother's name is Jose, right? Jose Cotto. As you look at that film, look at the hand speed, right? That, that shouldn't be impacted by weight gain and weight loss and stuff like that, right? Cotto's brother seemed to have a hand speed advantage on Saul Alvarez. Well, you could imagine, at a Cotto family reunion, when Cotto talks to his brother, his brother's going to say, yeah, I thought I had Canelo out of there. Cotto's going to look at the film. Cotto might even have sparred with his brother. Right? Both guys have been in the game a long time. I'm sure Cotto feels that if his brother almost beat Canelo, I'm sure Cotto feels that he can repeat and uphold a family name. Well, let me go one step further. I believe movement is the key to the Cotto Canelo fight. Cotto moves better than Saul Alvarez. If you don't believe me, all you have to do is kill the volume and look at Cotto against Sergio Martinez. Look at Cotto against. Delvin Rodriguez and ask yourself have you ever seen Canelo use that kind of foot speed in a boxing match I would argue the answer is no by the way that's recent Cotto that's Cotto with Freddie Roach understand a staple of many elite Freddie Roach fighters is an ability to move around the ring Right? You saw it when Roach had Amir Khan. You're seeing it now as Roach has Manny Pacquiao. You're seeing it with Miguel Cotto. I believe Cotto is going to outmaneuver Canelo. I believe Cotto can get lower than Canelo, and that's important, right? Because Cotto, simply put, is a murderous body puncher. By the way, 
let me say this. They're both murderous body punchers. Right? Both of them. But I would argue with Kodo's ability to move better and get lower, get in and get out. And with Kodo having, in my opinion, a slightly different balance than Canelo, right? Canelo, if you look at his body punches, and you'll see this in the Shane Mosley fight, he likes to go left, right, left, right, one hand after the other. Miguel Cotto is left hand heavy, right? He'll come in, drop a left hand bomb, right? If you sleep on Cotto, he'll come in, he'll double up, triple up with that left hook to the body. It's devastating. I like Cotto's delivery mechanism. Quick strike, lead with power punch. Style over Canelo's. Let me say something else too. This is to the boxing public. I keep getting emails. You know, messages here online. Saying, who has Floyd Mayweather fought? Right? The question is ridiculous, isn't it? Because, as I say Canelo Cotto, we all know that's a big fight. We also know that Floyd Mayweather beat both of them. Right? This is really the Floyd Mayweather Alumni Bowl, isn't it? Right? Well, understand. After the first fight that Floyd had against Marcus Maidana, Floyd was giving an interview. It was interesting. Right? People were talking to Floyd about how tough Marcus Maidana was. Now, let me say this. If you go back and you look at that film, I'm one of those who maintain that that first fight wasn't close. We know the second fight wasn't close. I'm here to tell you the first fight wasn't close, especially from the fourth round on. Right? Just look at the body punches. But it was interesting because Floyd very candidly said in an interview, he said, you know what? My fight against Miguel Cotto was harder than this fight, right? Of all the guys Floyd fought, the name that popped in his head at that moment was Miguel Cotto, right? Floyd in other interviews would say that Canelo is stronger than Marcus Maidana. But I'll tell you what, Canelo could be as strong as he wants. When it comes to who gave Floyd the tougher fight, I believe that was Miguel Cotto, right? What I want you to do, and I think this is good for any handicapper, is to track Floyd Mayweather's comments about this fight, right? Once the fight's announced, I'm sure Mayweather will be an interview that's sought after by the boxing journalists, right? I'm just a hack analyst here online. There are journalists who actually go and interview fighters. Right? Understand if anybody knows what these guys have to offer, it's Floyd Mayweather who gave Canelo his first loss. Right? Gave Cotto his last loss. Right? So, keep track of Mayweather's comments on this fight. In fact, let me back away from that last statement. I'm not quite sure when that Austin Trout Miguel Cotto fight took place. Let me say Austin Trout would also be an interesting person to comment about the fight with, right? Understand, though, that Austin Trout moves better than Saul Alvarez. I know there are going to be some people who say, hey, Trout beat Cotto. Trout lost to Canelo. I would argue that Trout beat both guys. I would also caution people on that trout Cotto fight because that was before Cotto got with Freddie Roach, right? So let me just say, to sum up, I like Miguel Cotto over Saul Alvarez. Let me point out, here online, people know I've been tracking Saul Alvarez since he was a teenager, right? I was very bullish on Saul Alvarez. Just like I've been bullish in the past 
on Janady Golovkin. Right? But understand, when these guys get to this level of the game, when they're fighting elite fighters or signed to fight elite fighters like Arislandy Lara, a guy I thought beat Canelo, right? Austin Trout, Miguel Cota, Joshua Clotty, right? When you're in that deep part of the pool, then let's be blunt here, I don't want to mince my words. I can like Canelo's power, I can like Canelo's left jab, I can like Canelo's slipperiness, right? Canelo can actually make you miss. You saw that in the Austin Trout fight, right? I can admire the fact that Canelo takes on heavy competition, right? I mean heavy competition, right? He's fought Floyd, right? Um, he's fought Erislandy Lara. He's fought Trout. That gets a standing ovation from me. But that doesn't mean I'm going to take him against Miguel Cotto. Right? I can like a fighter. I can admire a fighter on the way up. And when he gets to the top floor, I can say that in this upcoming match, the fighter's in over his head. I believe Saul Alvarez is in over his head against Miguel Cotto. The bet I'd recommend in that fight, and you're going to get decent odds because Saul Alvarez is loved by Las Vegas casinos. The bet I'd recommend is Miguel Cotto to win that fight, hedged against Saul Alvarez by KO. Alvarez hits like a Mack truck. He always has a puncher's chance in every fight he's in. With regard to Carl Frost, James DeGale, same bet. I'd take the challenger, James DeGale, to win that fight. I would give Carl Frotch a puncher's chance. Let's just put it this way, though. I don't see how Carl Frotch could beat James DeGale by decision. Right? There's a fight out there. I believe it's DeGale against Wilczewski. Right? Um... If you believe that Carl Frotch can rough up James DeGale, then that's the film to look at. Right? Because I don't believe Carl Frotch could duplicate what George Groves did. Groves has much better legs than Carl Frotch. But it's possible Carl Frotch could get inside and try to fight like that fighter did against DeGale. DeGale grinded out a decision in that fight, but it was close. It was a photo finish. Right? What I think you would see instead is the Gale coming in, switching from southpaw to orthodox, and literally getting inside of Frotch's looping punches and taking him apart. Right? I think the uh, fight would be more one-sided, quite frankly, than Andre Ward against Carl Frotch. Let me hear what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Let me add this. The first Frotch Andre Durrell fight. Right? And let's get our Durrell brothers right. It's Andre Durrell, not Anthony Durrell. Right? That first Frotch Andre Durrell fight. Andre Durrell danced a little bit too much, didn't he? When the fight got inside, Right? It looked like Durrell, you know, was going to the canvas and not really fighting on the inside. I believe that fight would be different now. Right? I believe Andre Durrell still moves better than Carl Frotch. But like Joshua Clotty, he seems to have streamlined his game a bit. Less movement more explosiveness, it looks like he's totally reworked his inside game as well. Right, so Carl Frotch is in a dangerous place. He's older now. The young Lions are at the gate. You're hearing excuses about why he doesn't want to fight James DeGale? Right, you're hearing him wanting to fight guys like 
Chavez Jr. who haven't been in the ring for a while, right? In other words, hey, rather than fight these young lions, why don't I fight the rusty guy? who hasn't been at 168 as long as the other guys, right? You hear Frotch from time to time say he wants another fight with Miguel Kessler. Let me fight the older guy from my generation, right? This is what happens when an older guy, in my opinion, starts to taste his own mortality. There was a time when Frotch claimed he was going to be around for several years. Now, in some interviews, he's talking about one or two more fights. Right? Keep an eye on that situation. I wouldn't be surprised if Frotch gives up a title rather than fight James DeGale. A fight I think he loses. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.